What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I'm, of course, Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy. Ninja, Monday mornings. No, nothing better, right, man? Dude, I'm fired up. You know, honestly, for some reason, the Oakland A's got me fired up yesterday, and this is an amazing day. The A's are on a heater, Ninja, for the A's. I mean, they had, they had the most exciting stuff go on in their game, and probably 20 people saw it. But it was great. We'll get into it in a little bit. Now under our whip around the league, I'm going to start out with Brian Bayo, who had eight Ks and five and a third innings, giving up two runs. Had these fastballs and this painted sinker, and he blew this heater by Trout. And you see Trout check the scoreboard like, how fast was that? He also had these change-ups and sliders. He faced Tyler Anderson, who had four Ks and four and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had these change-ups. And while most pitchers use pitch comp, Tyler Anderson uses ball comp. This is advanced, where the ball tells you what pitch it wants to be. Corbett Burns had five Ks and five innings, giving up two earned runs. He had these nasty cutters and this absolutely vicious two-seamer. Look at the movement on this thing. He faced Colin Ray, who had five Ks and five innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball, this sweeper, just off the plate, but will take it, and this changeup. Zach Wheeler had 10 Ks in five innings. He gave up four earned runs, but I'm going to blame that on me. More on that a little later. He was absolutely painting with these two seamers. And look at this one. This one ran 20 inches back door, absolutely filthy. And I overlaid this with this sweeper for a ball. And you can see why as a hitter, you would take this pitch. Um, he also had these curveballs. And here's where I jinxed him. I said that if you called Zach Wheeler the best pitcher in baseball, I wouldn't argue with you. And this was during the game. What happened? He proceeded to give a bomb and a bunch of runs. But I still stand by that. I think Wheeler may be the best pitcher in the NL. There's a couple of contenders, though. Yeah, and you didn't jinx him too hard, Ninja, because he is currently sitting at plus 480 to win the National League signing. And he's, he's in first place, uh, beating out Zach Gallon, who's at 650 right now. Yeah, and we're going to get to Zach Gallon in a bit. You know, I, I would put Zach Allen way up there with Wheeler, but Wheeler's stuff is incredible. He deserves that top spot. Mitch Keller had four Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs and had this cutter. Jose Barrios had seven strikeouts and seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. He had this four-seamer and two-seamer. This back foot slurve, that's filthy, as well as this wicked three-slurve K. He faced Kyle Freeland, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, had this fastball and curveball. Charlie F. and Morton had eight strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings, giving up six runs, but no one's going to remember those six runs he gave up. They're going to remember his curveballs. Those curveballs were filthy, most especially this back foot curveball, this literal back foot curveball. My man hits Jesus Sanchez on the foot, and Sanchez goes full Fred Flintstone on this. Morton has to lead the league in adding injury to insult, right? I'm pretty sure he does. I also think he may be the active leader in hit by pitches because he throws that wicked curveball and he loves going back foot with it. He's also leads the league in nutmegs. Um, he's done that several times as well, where he throws a pitch and it goes through the hitter's legs. He just, he just F's up hitters. He faced Jesus Rosardo at four Ks in five innings, giving up five runs and had these sliders. I do expect the Braves to make a run at Jesus Rosardo at some point this season to help replace Spencer Strider. It just seems like a good fit to me. And I feel like they can uh, buy low right now as the Jesus Lizard's not off to his best start, but he'll, he'll be back. Yeah. And I mean, he's got the stuff. Jack Flaherty had eight Ks in six and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had these fastball sliders and this back foot slider. He faced Bailey Ober, who was really good, with three Ks and six scoreless innings, giving up three hits. He had this elevated fastball and this changeup. Nestor Cortez had six Ks and four innings, gave up four runs. It is fastball, cutter, and changeup, but literally nobody will remember anything else Nestor did in this game because of this ridiculous pump fake pitch. I mean, what the hell goes through Nestor's mind? He's like, have you seen everything I could do? You think you have? No, you haven't. Check this crap out. I don't know how this is legal. It seems like it shouldn't be legal, faking a pitch and stuff, but it's hilarious, and it brings entertainment to the game. Will, do you like this stuff? 
I adore Nestor. He's my favorite Yankee ever. I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan, so I so I hate all Yankee scum. But I love Nestor. I do wish uh, he got taken deep here. It, it'd be good to see this ball <laughs> put 500 so feet away because uh, Nestor might have crossed the line on this one. It, it's just egregious. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for me, I think he crossed the line too. I don't know how you can fake a throw to. <laughs> how do you fake a pitch? I mean, I know there, it, it's not a balk. So everybody out there, if you say, why isn't this a balk? It can't be a balk because a balk by rule, there has to be a runner on base. There was no one on base. You couldn't do this with a runner on base, but you shouldn't be able to do this with a hitter up. This should be some kind of illegal pitch where it's called a ball. But you know what? We're all going to be talking about it. God bless Nestor. Fantastic stuff. He faced Logan Allen, who had four Ks and five and two thirds innings, gave him up four runs and had this cutter. Blake Snell had four Ks and four innings. He gave up seven runs, and his ERA right now is a gaudy or ungaudy, disgusting 12.86. What do you call that, Will? <laughs> is what you call it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth, Ninja. Yeah. He had this slider, changeup, and curveball, and he faced Sean Armstrong, who's really good as the opener with five Ks and two innings, giving up one run, had this cutter, slider, and fastball. Graham Ashcraft had eight Ks and five and two-thirds innings, giving up one earned run. He had these wicked cutters, including this incredible dead zone cutter. Dead zone cutters are when you throw a cutter right in the dead zone of a hitter's swing. Can't do it any better than that. He also had these sliders, and he faced Michael Soroka, who had four Ks and four and two-thirds innings, giving up five earned runs, and had eight walks. He did have these nasty sliders, but he's far from the filthy Mike Soroka that was with the Braves in his heyday. Native Aldi had three Ks and six innings, giving up five runs. He had this splitter and curveball. Definitely not one of Nate's better starts. I had thought that he had he's coming off a really, really good start, and this one was kind of a stinker. He faced Christian Javier, who had five Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had these elevated fastballs. Javier's fastball plays really well up in the zone. It's less dropped than fastballs at the same velo and gives the appearance of rising, so hitters tend to swing under it. Trevor Williams had seven Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs. He looked really good. He had these wicked sweepers and sinkers. And he faced Alex Wood, who had four Ks in four and a third innings, giving up four runs, and had this painted fastball and this paint-ish fastball. Javier Assad had eight Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs, cutter, and this really sick sinker. I mean, look at this thing drop. And he faced Luis Castillo, who went six innings with nine Ks. Nice. Nice. Giving up two earned runs. And these fastball sliders and the typical Luis Castillo K strut. He looks fully back. He was struggling his past couple of starts. But this looked like Luis Castillo that we all know and love. Zach Gallen was really good yesterday with seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up no runs. His ERA this year is now 1.64. Hit these fastballs, knuckle curves, and got this sword on a knuckle curve. We had the home plate umpire pull a full Nelson, a full Nelson from The Simpsons, pointing and laughing at the hitter. That's uncool. He faced Miles Michaelis, who had three Ks and four and two thirds innings, giving up five earned runs, and he had these painted two seamers. Hugh Darvish had two Ks and five innings, giving up three runs. His only two Ks were against Shohei Otani. I mean, he definitely put it into another gear facing Otani. He K'd Otani twice with cutters. And here's an overlay of a fastball cutter combo that he got Otani with. And you can see, I know how he thought this out. He used his fastball as bait, throwing fastballs that he knew Otani couldn't handle because you Darvish doesn't throw fastballs, even when he used to pitch to pitchers. He uses his fastball as bait to set people up for off-speed pitches, and he did this with Otani here. He gives Otani a low fastball, follows it up with a cutter in that same tunnel that Otani swings over, and then later does the same thing to Otani with another cutter. Just brilliant sequencing, as you can see in this overlay. He faced James Paxton, who had 1K in five innings, giving up three runs, and had eight walks. Yes, that is a one-to-eight strikeout-to-walk ratio. And he got his K on this paintish fastball. My starting pitcher matchup of the day was Cole Reagans, who had eight strikeouts and six scoreless innings. Reagans topped out at 100 miles an hour with his fastball, 
had these filthy knuckle curves, sliders, and change-ups, he faced Jose Budo, who battled him pitch for pitch this game. Budo went six scoreless innings with nine Ks. Nice. And gave up only two hits. He had these heaters, these sliders, and change-ups, and here's his change from a home plate feud. Just a great job by Budo. Where's Cole Reagans on the Cy Young board, Will? Fandle has Cole Reagans third in the AL Cy Young uh, race at plus 750. Only to be topped by Scooble and Burns. That's who I, That's exactly what I would have had. And we've interviewed all three of those guys to this year. That's right. On the Baseball Dojo podcast. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Adbert Alzali had this fastball and slider. Nick Birdie had these heaters. Josh Hader had this fastball. Danny Coulomb had this wicked breaking ball. Clay Holmes had this filthy sinker. Adam Adovino had this nasty sweeper and painted sinker. Yuki Matsui had these dirty splitters. Andrew Nardi had these sliders and fastball. And Alec Vessia had this fastball and got absolutely pumped up. Vessia does this all the time. I love the dude's energy. My top five pitches for the day. Number five, I have Graham Ashcraft and his dead zone cutter. At number four, Cole Reagans and his 100-mile-an-hour heater. At number three, we have that Zach Wheeler backdoor painted cutter. At number two, Charlie Morton and his Fred Flintstone back foot curveball. And at number one, I feel like I keep doing this, but it is so much well-deserved. This man is a freaking legend. I need He needs a nickname. His name, Mason Miller. They're both tradesmen, medieval tradesmen, right? And he basically goes medieval on hitters' asses, a la Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. I'm going to get medieval on your ass. He goes 101, 102, 103 mile an hour fastballs. His sliders, absolutely ridiculous. Look at the drop on this. It doesn't look real. I overlaid his 102 mile an hour fastball with his slider, and hitters can just basically go f- themselves there's no <laughs> prayer of getting a hit off this man should we call him like the tradesman because mason miller masons and millers are tradesmen what should his name be well you are the king of nicknames ninja but maybe more simple like just medieval or something medieval miller. medieval and then if if medieval mason turned into eventually just medieval that that's a pretty sick nickname all right we might do that i might make that happen i was thinking the same thing last night Leave, leave me your thoughts in the comments. Should he be dubbed medieval Mason Miller? Let me know. Before leaving the A's, this was absolutely tied for my biggest highlight of the day. And amazingly, they're both Oakland A's. Lucas Ersig made this amazing play, one of the greatest plays you will ever see a pitcher make. Look at this crap. Ball hits him on the foot, runs after it, flips it between his legs or more rolls it between his legs, losing his glove in the process. You're going to be seeing this for years to come. It's a lot like the Mark Burley play. The Burley play has this in some areas, but this play, when you're losing your glove on the flip and you somehow roll it, my jaw was dropped watching. This. I'm not sure I've seen a better play by a pitcher. You mentioned the Burley play. Maddox has a, a ton in, under his belt, but... Again, I don't know if I've seen a better play. If you have, mention in the comments, please. And everybody's going to say the Bartolo play, but the Bartolo play was more casually f***ing around, flipping it behind his back. I don't know, Bartolo casually flipping it versus this. I give it to this play. I get I'll, Bartolo out of here with, with that. Yeah, I mean, Bartolo is great in so many levels, and it was a sick play, but more for showing off. This, he had to do it. Like, this is incredible. Also, they won the game, and it was tight at the time. Yeah, I mean, what the hell? Give uh, give the Oakland A's every stadium in baseball. I want to see this team, if they're going to keep doing this stuff, like, I want to see the Oakland A's. They should be filling this place up. They, they're they playing so well, they deserve a minor league stadium in Sacramento. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. It's this fan pulling the old switcheroo on Sunday night baseball, catching this home run ball, and then throwing a ball he brought to the stadium out there so he didn't get the Dodgers fans pissed off. What do y'all think about this move? Here's the fan talking about right, what it. What kind of reaction did you get around you then? Because uh, I'm guessing others might have seen the switcheroo. Nobody in the stands called me out for the switcheroo. Everybody high-fived me and, and the telecast seems to be the only people that caught it. I did admit to a few people here what I had done. 
Um, but yeah, I, I got away scot-free from the, from the crowd. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Kyle Harrison for 5Ks or more, then take Luis Heel for 6Ks or more, top it off with Sonny Gray for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?